Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host, P Pistol B, Peter Blackburn. And today, we're going to do some Command Modern Naval Air Operations. Now, I've been doing some creative stuff for a couple streams. And I really want to take a break from streaming that for, you know, one or two streams. Mainly because I don't talk and I'm pretty sure I'm boring everybody. So, we're going to do a command modern, naval, modern air and naval operations. Today, we're going to continue our tutorials. So... I believe we have to do Modern Airplanes Interception, which is Flight Tutorial 6, uh, AAW4. So, Start Menu, Start New Scenario, Tutorials, Flight Tutorial, Flight Tutorial 6. No, because I've done this one. Because I've shot down. Um, I shot them down with AMRAMs instead of rear aspect missiles. Oops. I guess we're going on to strike tutorials then today. Strike tutorials. Bombing range. Should be fun. Alright, give me one sec, folks. Let me... No, I'm good. No, I'm good. Sorry. Okay, so... What I need... Is to click on this. Yes. Okay. This scenario is designed to help new players understand the methods and nuances of air-to-ground bombing. bombing in today's air forces doesn't carry the same glamour as the air-to-air -air missions. But once the glamour jockeys get off their shining white chargers and realize that the world does not uh, revolve, revolve around white knights rescuing damsels in distress anymore, they recognize delivering ordnance to service targets is why they exist, disparagingly called air-to-mud or farming. Air-to-ground targeting is generally of two types. Close air support, while ground troops are involved, or strike, where targets are located and destroyed independent of ground forces. There are several subclasses of each type, but we will focus on simple strike missions with one aircraft each. Each Most modern fighters, fighters are called multi-role, indicating that they can do both air-to-air -air in an effort to gain air superiority and air-to-ground roll to strike ground targets. Some aircraft such as the F-15C or the MiG-31 are strictly air-to-air -air, while some other aircraft are strictly air-to-ground such as the A-10 or the Su-25. These flying tanks are largely focused on CAS with troops in close combat. Contact. Today we will use the F-16, one of the most prolific and versatile modern aircraft in use today. <clears throat> one could make a serious study of the various types of F-16 out there, but it is not important to this tutorial. The model chosen... Who boarded Ammon? Um, that would be Lamoni. No, that was his dad. But, yeah, who hit him? Or tried to hit him with a stick. Or his sword. 
<laughs> That's funny. Silly kitty. Uh, da, 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 da. The model chosen has the ability to use a wide range of munitions to demonstrate the game's functions needed. If you wish to know more, you can always go here. Aaron, Aaron dealt with the father, but if I remember right, Am, uh, the father tried to beat Ammon with a sword. Don't worry, in future tutorials, we will use other aircraft of Russian, European, or Chinese manufacture, so you can get used to these as well. So enter the game, and look around. You have an airbase in Mali, and some targets all nicely lined up for you. There are no defenses arrayed against you in this scenario, so you are free to play around without getting... Yes. So you are free to play around without getting shot at. Enjoy the enjoy this impressive game. This tutorial should take about 30 to 40 minutes to complete. Load selected. Tutorial 1. Bombing range. Good morning, Colonel. You are the squadron commander of Blue Strike Squadron, and your job today is to learn how to use your assets and strike missions. Remember, Shimano is not a flight simulator. It is a tactical operational command simulator that replicates the tactical employment Space Blossom. Don't don't you mean Death Blossom? Cause uh Yeah. So you don't actually fly the aircraft, you're the boss, you tell the pilot what to do, and she, he, goes off and does what you tell them. Unless something goes wrong, or the situation changes, of course. Then they have this desire for, then they have this desire for self-preservation. What is this world coming to? You have 12 F-16s, very handy little aircraft indeed. If you're interested in facts and figures, it's about 2 billion U.S. dollars worth of airframes. And don't forget that you'll be spending thirty-four thousand dollars. <laughs> thirty-four thousand dollars per aircraft flight hour. The munitions you're dropping range in price from about two thousand dollars for a Mark 82 dumb bomb to about one point five million for a Jasm. Once the game, open the game and review your forces. Each of your F-16s is loaded with a different loadout. We will practice with most of the available loadouts to give you a feel for which ones to choose in a real game. Munitions selections. Selection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Professor Harold Hill. Munitions selections is one of the most important decisions a player will make, and it is expensive in time if you get it wrong. Hopefully, this tutorial will help you with that. We will not be using the air-to-air -air loadouts, as there are other tutorials covering that aspect. We're doing real work in this tutorial. Also, we are limiting ourselves to ground targets. Although, surface also includes ships... That will be the subject of another tutorial. And finally, we will not be conducting SEED, Suppression of Enemy Air Defense, which is a specialized skill set and will also be covered later. Use a suitcase bomb. No. No, this is not the movie Pursuit. A message will appear in about 15 seconds with instructions for your first strike. Oh, one more note. Modern aircraft generally don't fly alone. They like the company of a wingman. This goes to that very efficient principle of... inefficient principle of self-preservation again. Anyway, in this tutorial, we'll be flying single aircraft, one ship, 
where most missions you conduct in the game will be in two-ship or even four-ship formation. You played the president twice? Sure he did. Don't ask me why they call them ships. Something to do with that knight on a white charger thing, I'm sure. All right. Okay. Said I should get um, more instructions in fifteen seconds. Twelve, thirteen, two, one. Oh my gosh! Here's more instructions. Oh. Let's check out our first strike aircraft. Strike number one. Select the blue base and hit the F6 key or just push the aircraft button right over here. F6 key. Uh, uh, I don't know. Alright. Strike number one is an F-16 loaded with six Mark 82 low drag general purpose bombs. National Treasury 2. No. That's not the same president. <clears throat> you will note that this bomb was first put in action in 1954. A lot has changed in bomb design since then. You will also note that range against anti-surface targets is one nautical mile or one nautical mile. That's the right that's right on top of the target. Launch altitude is anywhere between 800 feet air ground level and 65,000 feet air ground level. Quite flexible. This is a 500 pound general purpose bomb. Surface probability of hit is 99%. That is good, so it will probably hit the ground, not necessarily the target. The circular error probability means that it will likely hit within 50 meters of where it is aimed. But you're aiming it with the entire aircraft. It is not a precision weapon. If you hit your target, you will do 130.5 damage points. Don't get into John. Don't get into John Glover or Ben Cross. Yeah. Damage points is game abstract to measure a target's ability to absorb damage versus a weapon's ability to, to deliver that damage. It's an abstract, which means it may not be reality. Your target, target one, get all right, is a guard post. No problems. Check the database. You'll know this is a building. Okay, it has 25 damage points. So if you hit it, you should kill it with your bombs, which do 130 damage points each. It has light armor, which should not be a problem for your bombs. It is a 20 by 20 meter target, giving a target area of about 400 square meters. Launch strike one by either right clicking on the aircraft and selecting launch individually from the drop down menu, or by clicking the launch individually from the options along the bottom of the air operations box. Right. Launch individually. All righty. Um, target one. Target one. Guard post. Contact report. 
No hosted units spotted. Hmm. Three times POTUS, Kingsman, Golden Circle. I've never seen that movie. I don't believe it exists. So, it must not. Time to ready. 18 seconds. So we'll be taking off in 18 seconds. Okay. All right. Okay, once he's in the air, you can get him targeted quite easily. Select aircraft. Strike one. Hit the F1 key. Select target one. <laughs> you can do this with the unit orders menu as well. Select target one. The rest is in the hands of your pilot. He will proceed directly to the target, adopt a suitable attack profile, and drop the bombs. You should get there in about 15 minutes of game time, so you can speed up time with the plus key, remembering to slow it down as he approaches the target, minus key, or drop it to 1 to 1 time compression with the enter key. You can always hit the space bar to pause and restart the timer. All right, we're on one to one. Let's get him. Let's get him. He is at 36,000 feet, air, sea level. That would be bariatric pressure. Barometric pressure. There we go. Barometric pressure. Let's get him. All right, we're real, getting real close now. Uh, he's going to get him soon. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Oh, there we go. What? Oh. It's dropping target list. No suitable available weaponry. What? The bejesus. All right, attack options. Gauge options manual. Click on target. I dropped one bomb. Oh, it's saying I dropped it. It's saying that I bombed him, so, but I'm not getting, well, if you were lucky, you killed target one, 
<laughs> but there is a good chance you mess with your bombs. That's what Korean War war error weaponry is like when you bomb with LDGPs. Use lots of them. One thing to consider when using dumb bombs is your attack altitude. Many Cold War era bombers were designed for the fast and low approach. Low because the geometry of a low release alt altitude keeps the bombs close to the target and reduces the miss distance. Whereas high level release increases the likely area the bomb will drop exponentially. The bomb will hit increases the likely area yeah, where it will hit exponentially. Plus, the added time in the air allows wind and many other ballistic factors to affect bombs more dramatically. The fast part of this delivery method is needed. Because it's not healthy for a multi-million dollar aircraft to be dragging its tail down where everything from tree branches to shrapnel from its own bombs and small arms fire may damage it, not to mention anti-aircraft guns and missiles. Your next strike will be a bit different. You will step forward about 50 years and use some modern JDAM joint direct attack munition weapons. In reality, this is simply a guidance kit strapped on to the old 1950s era weapons family you dropped in Strike One, but it makes a difference. First, a little bit on weapon names. We will consider Warsaw Pact and other bombs in further tutorials, but in this instance, the standard bomb is NATO, is American Mark 80 series. <sighs> Sorry. Mark 82, nominal weight, 250 pounds. And Mark 81, 250. Mark 82, 500. Mark 83, 1,000. Mark 84, 2,000. The Mark 81 firecracker was used in Vietnam, but not much after that, and is no longer produced. The Mark 82 is the most popular of this series due to its small size, allowing more to be carried by many different aircraft types and the low blast radius which keeps a limit on collateral damage critical in many modern operations. The Mark 83, although re regularly used by the U.S. Navy, is not popular with most other forces. It doesn't have the striking power of the Mark 84 but causes more unintentional damage than the Mark 82. Uh. The Mark 84, when you need to hit something hard, you use this bomb. Added to all of these bombs are guidance kits, either laser, GPS, or both, and or delivery systems that either slow the bomb, allow a lower altitude delivery, snake eye, or a penetration capability, BLU-109. For this mission, you have one F-16 with two GBU-31 version 3 slash Bs. JDAM BLU-109Bs with a Sniper RX pod FLIR and an AN-ALQ-184 pod as well. Let's break that all that down. Let's break that down because it's a little... Blah, blah, blah. GBU, Guided Bomb Unit. 31 for a Mark 84. V3 slash B is a guidance kit version. JDAM, GPS guided for more details. Go here. BLU109 slash B, penetrator fuse. Sniper XR pod, FLIR targeting pod, forward looking infrared radar. ANALQ-184 pod, and electronic countermeasures pod. Now, as far as targets, you have two hardened aircraft shelters. The perfect target for a 2,000-pound penetrator. You are, they were almost made for each other. Hmm. Almost made for each other. <clears throat> Launch your second strike jet and move it towards the target, please. Boop. 
All right. I destroyed contact target one. So we need to go to blue base aircraft. Strike two. He has AMRAMs on. But his loadout says GBU 31. All right. Launch individually. Prepare to launch. Time to ready. 31 seconds. Roger that. Time to ready. 31 seconds. Finally took off. Okay. He's awaiting orders, so I should probably go to Attack options. Oh, yep, here we go. <clears throat> uh, select the aircraft. Strike two. Shift F1. Drag to select both targets labeled target two. The weapon allocation dialog appears. It has four main areas. The top left column lists your attacking units. The bottom left column lists your targets the bottom the center column are suitable weapons the right column is for confirmation and some other stuff we will get to later select the unit strike 2 in the upper left column select one of the targets in the lower left column select the GBU in the center column we will strafe with gun light, guns later. At the bottom of the center column are three bars. The top one, allocate weapon to selected targets. This is the one we want. Put a one on the selector window. All right. Press the button bar in the previous step. All right. Both sections on the right-hand column should indicate that one GBU-31 is allocated to the target. Select the second target in the left column. You should have one bomb left. Allocate it to this target. If something has gone wrong, you can deallocate your weapons and go back to the start of this process. All right, close the box. And now you can watch to see what happens as your pilot earns his paycheck for the day. All right, pilot is on heading, pilot is on heading. Uh, 
Oh, yes. By now, you should note a couple of things. Strike number one. Once his ammunition was expended, automatically return to base. He can change his behavior through the doctrine interface. But for now, we'll leave it alone. But strike number two has two circles around it. A red circle representing it's an air-to-air -air weapons range, and a brown one representing it's air-to-surface weapons range. Strike number one had these as well, but you probably only noticed the red air-to-air -air circle since your current load of JDAMs has a 12 nautical mile range. The circuit circle is apparent and useful. We are not going to be bothered by enemy aircraft. Let's turn the AA circle off. Go to map settings. And uncheck air weapons. You will note that you can turn on or off any of these range circles. They're for you to use as you need or wish. Feel free to experiment with whatever helps you with your battle. The sensor ranges won't appear unless you turn your radars on, F9, unit menu, or sensors button on the right. You don't have sonar on an F-16. I wouldn't sweat that one. I don't need the laser designator. Because we are dropping GPS weapons. <sighs> Fine. Okay. So I wonder when he's going to launch his weapons. We really close. Does it have range to target? Range to target. That's unit fuel. That's Emicon. Doctrine windows. No, it doesn't have range to target. But Bomb one, bomb one has been released. Is that eighteen thousand feet and dropping? Come on, get him, get him, El Bombo. Bomb's going to get there, going to get there. All right. Bomb one is at 6,000 feet AGL. 
4,000 feet. 2,000 feet. 500 feet. Boom! That's one hanger that just took a big old bomb hit. Okay, modern weapons are so much easier to use. Not as unlikely you killed both targets, but you should have at least hit both. So each of the JDAMs have a damage ability of 363. And each of the hardened air shelters has 350. So in theory, one bomb per target, right? Wrong? Well, sort of. To achieve the maximum effect depends on a large number of factors, which are modeled in the game through a series of factors and dice rolls. The message log, message log will give you clues. In one example, 37% penetration achieved, weapon impacted, but the other one missed. So one of my <laughs> JDAMs missed by a massive 75 feet, about 10% of the miss distance in strike one. Who knows why? Gust of wind, problem from what the GPS hit a bird that has survived that hardened air shelter survived with light damage. Good chance that the shelter did its job and protected any aircraft inside. The other JDAM hit the target and penetrated thirty seven percent. That shelter is on fire and has heavy damage. Chances are any aircraft inside would be destroyed or at least damaged. Thankfully, there were no malfunctions, and both bombs worked. The lesson is that is that in precision strikes, one bomb for one target is no guarantee of a kill. <sighs> Moving on to strike number three. This strike is something a bit different. You're going to use cluster munitions, or CBU-105, WCMD, specifically wind-corrected munitions dispenser. These are designed for top attack on tanks and other armored vehicles. All right. You may have read or heard that cluster munitions are outlawed by Geneva Convention. That is not specifically true. You can read the detail here. The focus of the ban is to eliminate munitions that leave the equivalent of anti-personnel mines on the battlefield. Such as many early generations with high dud rates did. Many modern CBUs comply with paragraph 2C and are specifically targeted, have self-destruct or deactivation mechanisms, or are generally much more reliable than under other munitions. So you have two, you have anti-tank cluster munitions, and you have two lonely tank troops as a as a target. Launch, please, and get strike three moving towards the target. Okay, so let's look at what our guys did here. Event 3 has been fired. Okay, I think it's Control, Shift, and there we go. Okay. Let's look at our screen here. Man, that GPU missed target 2 by 36 feet. Thirty six feet. Target one was Target one died, but that's because I hit it with six frickin' bombs. Okay. Six 36 feet. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. 
Okay, strike three. Strike three is ready. Wow, strike one will be ready in five hours, 55 minutes. Strike three. We are going to launch him individually. So, I barely did any damage to this one. We can see... That's not really damaged. All right. Number two. Missed target by 66 feet. We did cause fire and light damage, but not. Um, we did not take them out of action. So we're going to have to work. Okay, strike three is airborne. Game menu, side doctrine, game menu, side doctrine. Right column under air operations. Air ground strafing run gun. Yes. Close the doctrine window. Select strike three. Hit F1. Drag and select. Hit F1. <laughs> you can Mark target three. You may have noticed that the tank units, you can tell that they're tank units by the little tank track symbol if, you use, if you're using NTDS symbols. Have the numbers three next to their upper left side. This represents the number of actual tanks that the unit contains. When you fire a Wember and a unit, a one will appear in the lower left to represent the number of weapons that the unit has allocated to it. By the way, when using NTDS symbols, infantry is represented by a large X depicting the crossed belts on a Napoleonic soldier and artillery is represented by a dot to represent a cannonball. Okay. So, he's making his turn. Oh. Strike 4 will be using a very modern version of a bomb, the small diameter bomb first fielded in 2006. It is truly a weapon designed for the current fight or counterinsurgency operations. It is smaller than the defunct Mark 81 and only 200 pounds. But it has a range of 60 nautical miles and is very accurate. You have eight GBU-39 SBDs and six small buildings to destroy. Use your munitions frugally to destroy all the buildings. Okay, blue base, aircraft. Strike number four will not be ready for seven minutes, 56 seconds, but we're gonna prep them for launch anyway. Strike four. Shift F one.
DLK. DLK. Okay, so. Okay, so your attack order gave the pilot two targets. And he followed his weapons release authorization and released both CPUs on one tank troop, which has missile defense estimate of four. So once you watch the cool CBU <laughs> graphics destroy one of the tank units, you are left with one tank unit alive and well. Time to strafe him. Hit the aircraft. Check the aircraft. Strike three. Hit the U key. Hit the U key, shift F1, all right, allocate all weapons of this type, Incoming transmission. Uh, sit back and watch the aircraft adopt the appropriate altitude and begin to engage. Okay. Incoming transmission. Good luck. Son of a gun. Incoming transmission. Gonna kill some tanks. Boom, they gone. Target 3 has been destroyed. Mobile targets are the next task. Older JDAMs, many guided weapons, and certain dumb bombs have a hard time striking these targets. Fortunately, the F-16 has the ability to use AGM-65, the Maverick missile. This is based on a 1970s design, but has gone through significant improvement. Details here. It is good for much more than moving targets, but is one of the few pre-2000 weapons that can reliably hit movers. You have two moving cars to strike, and two missiles to do it with. Engage. Um, now might be a good time to check how you're doing. Don't worry, this is a basic tutorial, and, and you will win. But it's always nice to know how the fight is going. In command, and scenario designers have complete latitude in how they score a scenario, which is fantastic. But it does take a while for a player to get used to it. In some of my scenarios, the player is likely to get his, her butt kicked. So I adjust the scores so you can measure how well you are losing. If that makes any sense at all. So in this scenario, you get 10 victory points for every target you destroy, and you achieve a triumph by destroying 15 of them. Sometimes you get points for achieving missions, preventing the opposing forces from doing something, or preserving your assets. Totally up to the designer. 
Some players don't really pay attention to point scores. Neither do some designers. In this case, if it feels good, you've won. So to check how you're doing is measured against the designer's idea of how the scenario should unfold. Go to Game Menu Scoring. My current score is 30. The next tab is Losses and Expenditures. Read out which shows the, what you have expended in munitions and what you have killed, and the same for each side in the game. And there could be many sides, depending on, upon how complex the scenario is. Be advised that there is a little bit of a spoiler or a cheat on this tab. It will show exactly what you, exactly what you have killed, even though you may not have received accurate BDA bomb damage assessment on your strikes. So if you don't want to bend the rules of physics, don't look at this page until the end of the game. If you want to learn effects of munitions or what the heck has been giving you all those problems, take a look. It's your game. You can also get to this screen directly from the game menu. Finally, the scoring log will give you an event by event countdown of how you gained and lost points. Cool. Cool, cool. Sorry. Looking at some stuff, trying to get some stuff figured out. And uh, there you go. No. Nope. Sorry. And we're back. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry. Aircraft. Preparing to launch. Infrared Mavericks. Well, we'll see how this goes, won't we? Won't we? Yes, we shall. We shall. All right. Are they dead yet? Oh, sorry. Incoming transmission. Yay, my baby's done with work. Am I out of ammo? I bet I am. No, he says he has four left. Yeah, he's only fired one. I don't know what's taking him so long.
Uh, pop on our radar. He's at 36,000 feet. I need him to attack. There we go. He'll do it that way, since he doesn't want to do it the other way. Here he comes. Okay, looks like um, we got 75% penetration achieved on a shot. Good job, good job. Um, preparing to launch 3 minutes 21 seconds until I got launched. Ooh, 93% achieved. Good job. Contact 3 has been destroyed! Alright. Alright, so we're waiting on these small diameter bombs. Ooh, mid target. By 75 feet. Got one, got two, got three. Got four. Got five. We've, we've achieved five. All right. Shift F1, target four. Allocate weapon to select a target. Close window. You return to base. Strike three is returning to base. Alrighty, we got weapons on their way, gonna hit that little house, target for medium damage, building small, there is a fire, the building may burn down, alright, strike five has departed blue base and is awaiting in orders. High five. High five. Shift F1. Target. Target. Jesus. Hit the dang target. Crap. Missed target four by fifty two feet. He's only armed with 
standoff weapons. He is RT RGB. RTB at this time. Ooh, heavily damaged now. I don't know why that billion just could just take a lot of hits, I guess. Okay. I need to turn up the heat in this apartment because it's going chilly and my Dan is on her way home and I need to make sure this place is warm for her. So give me two seconds and I will be right back. Be right back. Mic off. Mike on. Alrighty. Have you ever used the saying, I feel like a million bucks? Well, at 1.5 million, each joint air to surface standoff missile is truly a capable munition. Just don't expect too many of them. Has a range of 215 nautical miles. So it's a standoff weapon. Has subsonic terrain following crews and a double warhead. One to penetrate, one to deploy. For this one, fly towards the target, out past target two, and you will get another message outlining what you should do for the attack. Okay, I think that's strike six. Yep, so strike six. One hundred percent penetration achieved. Finally, and that's why Target Two survives. Okay, five minutes forty three seconds. Tell us ready to go. But we're going to prepare it for launch anyway. So in five minutes, it will be in the air. Or at least ready to go into the air. Into the wild blue yonder. Oh my gosh. Can I be stranger today? Da, 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 da. All right. So, Space Engineers is going fine for the kids. <laughs> Strike six. All right, let's, oops, F3 him. Right there. Target six. Strike five. Looks like. Vehicle, car, times one. Missile defense, one harm, slam, maverick equivalents.
onboard sensors, generic binoculars. One, mark one eyeball. Infrared detection range, 1.3 nautical miles. Okay, now follow this procedure. Select strike six. Strike six. Shift F1. Sign one Jasmine to each target. Now in the lower right box, select the JASM that is assigned to one of the targets. Plot course, option becomes available, press this button. Maximum 10 waypoints and you cannot exceed the range of the weapon. Plot a course and do the same for the second weapon. If you don't like your course, click on clear course and do it again. Once you're happy, you close the box and watch them fly. It's a great way for getting around defenses. Make up your mind. That's why. All right, can I sensors? Bam. Not messing around. Five second or five seconds. Okay. All right, Mavericks are on their way. One car gone. Two cars gone. Good job. Good job. Good job. AGM 158 Alphas are also inbound. I didn't do anything to help them avoid targets and defenses or whatnot, but. Let's see what happens. What? This is not really a strike, but once you launch your aircraft, strike seven, fly it toward the target. When you get a few miles out of the base, hit control F1. This is a bearing only launch. And you should launch your miniature air launch decoy anywhere you would like. This is another useful technique. 
you will need to penetrate heavily defended areas. Um, after this, you have several aircraft about to be ready, so you should feel free to play around with different weapons on board to destroy any targets on the range. You are now qualified to bomb stuff. Well, how the freaking loser! Building pump house. Building pump house is gone. The first one missed by fourteen feet and still took it out. Aircraft. Launch individually. Taxiing to take off. Two minutes. Strike seven is awaiting orders. Strike seven is awaiting orders. All right, strike seven. Control F one. Allocate one. Firing. So that thing just makes it sound like it's me. It says I have guys ready to launch. About ready to launch. Aircraft. Part ready. GBU 54. Mark 82, GBU 10, Payway 2, I right, won't we'll take this wall. Small buildings. Mark 84, watch strike 12 as well. Strike nine has been launched. Strike nine has been launched. That has two payways, so we are going to shift. Target two. Allocate one weapon to target. Strike twelve has also been launched.
Alright, shift F1. I'm gonna hit this last guy with that weapon. And then we're gonna sit back and bomb the last of them. Blue strike twelve. Where are you going? Bingo. Bingo fuel. You will not return to base. You're going to get your butt out there. And bomb this target. Said I had no orders and I signed my whiskey ask. Malfunction. Malfunction. Alright, F1. Target 2. Okay, 1. Target 3. Okay, 1. Alright, all weapons are allocated. All but weapons are allocated. I shoot. Uh, strike nine. Turn base. Strike nine. You're a disappointment. You don't drop those bombs. You will be a bingo fuel. Bingo fuel. Ah, crap. All right. He's at a terrible altitude. Yeah, you missed it by a thousand feet. Because I done didn't tell you to drop it from a lower freaking altitude.
Here we go. Oh, we missed by 43 feet. The target was destroyed. Possibly. Probably. Contact target has been lost. All right, drop, drop, drop. All right, summary. In this tutorial, you have used a wide array of munitions to attack various targets. Standard dumb bombs tend to miss a lot, but if you drop enough of them, you will do some damage. More modern weapons, while not as versatile as a standard bomb, do a much better job of hitting the targets. Remember, you should use the best tool for the job at hand. Munition selection is one of the most important decisions you have when planning a strike. There are no wonder, woman, wonder weapons that are all things to all targets. JDAMs are great if you know where the target is and it's not moving. Mavericks are great against moving targets, but don't do a lot of damage. SBDs are great for small pinpoint targets, but can't penetrate and don't hit very hard. Cluster bombs cover a wide area. Penetrate armor, but don't do too much to buildings. The nearest thing that you have to a silver bullet is a jasm. But you probably won't have many of them, and only in very modern scenarios. So now that you're... Now that you know how, get out there and bomb something. In the game, that is. Alright. Missed target by 79 feet that time. Boom! Boom! Done blow that son of a gun right up. Here's the last one. Boom! 87 feet. Target has been destroyed. Finally. No mission fuel remaining. Using reserve. Return to base. Return to base. 306 nautical miles to base. Um, I think my plane gonna crash. It's 33 minutes of fuel and it's an hour and five minutes of flight time. Uh, aircraft, aircraft, aircraft. Do I have any tankers? Any tankers? No. I don't. Ready, arm. Oh, come on. Is there... Do these guys have... Oh, they wouldn't have buddy stores, would they? Freaking Air Force. Well, that poor son of a gun's gonna crash. So, we're going to stop the game, go to scoring, and scenario immediately. You will now be presented with the evaluation of your performance. Okay. Triumph. Your final score is 180. We expended six Mark 82s. Two GBU 31s, two CBU 105s, um, 500 Vulcan rounds, two GBU 39s, two AGM 158 alphas, two AGM 65s, one decoy, two GBU 10s, and four Mark 84 2000 pound low drag general purpose bombs killed one building, two hardened aircraft shelters, and one medium aircraft. Six Scorpion 90s, nine buildings, small, two vehicles, and two pump houses. Good job, everybody. Good job, everybody. Now that that's done, folks, we're going to call it a stream. Uh, thanks so much for coming out tonight. I hope you had a wonderful evening. I hope you're having a good new year. Um, yeah, and we'll do this again. Probably sometime soon. So, later.